this is Brian Klein. And today I'd like to talk to you a bit about the use of the Good Docs project content templates as archetypes in Hugo. My day job is with Thunderhead Engineering, where we develop engineering software for life safety. And I'm also a volunteer member of the Good Docs project on the project steering committee. And I'm speaking to you with that hat on today and how we can use the Good Docs project templates as part of your documentation. So why do we want to do that? We really want to maximize efficiency of information transfer. We're trying to shorten the distance between I need to get specific information out and get it into the head of somebody else. So we don't want to reinvent the wheel with that and start from scratch every time for every new content type. We'll go ahead and stand on the shoulders of giants and take advantage of all of the good information and experience of everybody who's been a member of the Good Docs project and all of the feedback that we've received from people who use the templates as part of their projects. So how we're going to do that, we're going to be using the Good Docs project templates as Hugo site archetypes, and we're going to be editing those through Gitpod. And I'll even mention Front Matter CMS and how that's a nice option for editing your content. What we will be doing with that, we're creating a bash command to pull the Good Docs project templates from GitLab. We're going to turn those into archetypes. We'll use another command to make new content from those archetypes, and you'll see that in action here in a moment. Who we're looking at targeting this talk and the templates to are software developers, technical writers, project owners. Hopefully that's you. You'll find use in this. You see a couple of URLs here where we have the Good Docs project itself. And then just an example site that I have put together a while ago and keep adding useful bits to as I come across new ideas or new things to help out with Hugo. There's a whole bunch of references here that I'll be making to different tools and technology and things. So here's a little reference slide just to look up any of that at your own leisure. Let's go ahead and see that in action and I'll jump right in. And where I want to start is with the Good Docs project templates itself. There is a public project here on GitLab. You can see the URL here at the top. And in that project, I'm in the main branch here, there are regular releases of the state of the templates over time. And so we just did a 1.0 release, 1.1 is coming up soon. I'll be working with the main branch today. And primarily I'll be working with that because there was some housekeeping done to update some of the file names and make them more consistent from template to template. That makes the scripting and everything that I'm showing today much easier to use. As an example, if you go to any one of these folders, Typically, you'll see two files at least, a guide.tutorial and template.tutorial. So the guide file is always giving you information about the template itself, what kind of information goes in it, how to use it, all of that. It goes into a lot of detail and background. And then the template file is the actual structure, the markdown file and the structure of the content that you want to use for your new content. So we really want these templates, right? The template dash, that's what we're looking for our archetypes. The guides are great for background and information. I recommend you go read those and you can get those on the site, but the templates is, is the useful bit for us today. So let's switch over here to my starter project. It's also on GitLab. You can see the URL here. And I'm just working in the main branch. I'm using a tool called Gitpod. Gitpod sets up ephemeral workspaces that are basically configured to run all the operations, use whatever image or workspace environment that you need. It can open up ports, do live serving. It's a really nice tool for having specific configurations for lots of different projects and be able to just launch those workspaces without having to install anything locally or mess with anything like that. One other thing is I'm using the Gitpod browser extension and that adds helpful little buttons to make sure that you can launch the environment from the proper context. So in this case, I'm in main branch. If I click Gitpod, it actually launches the Gitpod environment and runs through the script here to go get the templates and create archetypes and everything right here is the first step so that subsequent steps will use that information and make that information available. So you can see, get the templates, run Tailwind in watch mode, and then run Hugo dev server and run that live and make sure the live reload works and everything else. This information here, port 1313, that's the default port for Hugo, as most people know. And when that port opens, I want it to go ahead and just open up a new browser tab, which we see right over here. So that opened up automatically. All that happens when you launch the workspace, all of that happens in different terminals. I'm also using a tool called Front Matter. I'll just reference that quickly. It's an extension for VS Code, and it lets you work with your media assets, snippets, data files, create your tags and taxonomies, and even your content. So you can click in here, and it'll go ahead and give you UI. You can build UI for your Front Matter 
page sections here and be able to edit those and jump in and do all of that visually without having to remember all the different fields and everything in the front matter variables. What's nice about front matter is it also has the ability for you to create content from archetypes in the file system. And so if we take a look up here, these are the Hugo archetypes. I can also create front matter templates to create new content through the UI, which is pretty helpful. I'm not going to use that today. I'm going to get rid of front matter for now, but it is an option that you can do to make that easy for managing your content. So we'll notice here in the archetypes folder that there's lots of these template dash files and then one called templates dash front matter. This is the only file that I check into my repository. The other ones I basically generate dynamically when I spin up the environment. I go ahead and pull all the latest versions of the templates from main and fill those in here with the archetypes folder. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that. If I go to the docs path here, I put some information in here about how you can do this yourself. So the first thing to take a look at here is this long series of commands and bash in the command line. So using a URL like this, you can pull an archive of a particular branch or release tag, et cetera, from GitLab and pull that down. In this case, it's targz file. I then use the tar command to extract that. And this transform function, I'm basically saying, go through all subfolders and everything of the archive and transform that all up to put it all in the root of this output folder, which is archetypes. And I'm only looking for files that end with MD. So I'm not getting anything else except markdown files in this case in any of the subdirectories. The next step then is to go through that folder and find any file that's not named template than a wildcard.md. So it has to start with the word, the, with the string template, can have anything in between, and then end with md, and delete anything that doesn't match that pattern, that is not that name. Now I want to go through every template dash. For each one of those, I do this little set operation that essentially cats my template's front matter that I have in that file and inserts that at the top of every single file, just puts it right in front above everything else in the template. And then at the end, it removes the archive. That command generates all of these files and it's very fast. In fact, here's the command. If I hit it, it's done. It goes and gets those, it updates and everything. If we take a look at like the tutorial, for example, you can see now that it has that front matter from my templates, front matter here, and it's been inserted at the top. One thing to note are that the templates usually start with an H1 called title. In most static site web markdown files, the title variable in the actual front matter is what's used for the H1 typically in your layouts and your designs and not a H1 level heading. And you can delete that from the top of the template. And then now we're starting with overview. And you can see here's the content. This is the rest of it all the way down. Now I want to actually create the content. I'll go ahead and copy this command. I've given some information here about how this works, but we'll come back in here and to bash and I'll paste this. And what I'm basically saying is Hugo new. So that tells Hugo to make new content in the docs folder. I want a file called this is how you do something.md. I want to use the template tutorial kind, that's the K, and that's going to look in archetypes and pull whatever you've named that here. It'll look up the name and use that archetype for your new content. And this is how you do something with these hyphens. That you'll notice here in the templates that there's actually a replace.name function. And this will get rid of all the dashes in the file name, replace it with spaces, and then title case it, and then use that as the actual title text when the template is used to create the new file. So if I come in here now and I hit enter, the content is now created. And if we take a look here, let me minimize some of the stuff. We have a new content docs. We have a new file here. This is how you do something. And you can see that it was title case to put there. So now we just start editing and I can come over here now and see this is how you do something. I have Hugo running in a state where it automatically navigates to whatever page changes. So because we created this page new, it automatically loaded it. Then I can say in this cool tutorial, and if I save, you can see the word cool come in. So now as I'm editing, I'm seeing live updates as I save of exactly what the page will look like on the finished website. If you have any suggestions on templates, you'll notice something here at the bottom of every template where it'll say there are more here and feedback form is here. Notice there's and template equals tutorial. This is a little code for us so that when you open up the feedback form, it'll automatically know 
which tutorial you're giving feedback on, and then you can give any of the information here and submit that to us. That gets triaged and then used to improve the template. All right, with that, I think that covers it. If you have any other questions, please let me know, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.